Hello once again ladies and gentlemen, Zach RC here, welcoming you to your 11th round of the Formula A World Championship. This is the United States Grand Prix. Coming into today, Alexia Pernay holds a 4 point lead in the driver's standings over Sophie Deville, but Sergio Abaloa, a newcomer to the championship fight, Milton Verve, are hot on the heels of the leaders, and with 6 rounds with it all to play for, the tug of fire begins to take shape as we start the close out this season. Here's the track then, the circuit of the Americas, deep, located deep in the heart of Austin, Texas. Introduced onto the F1 calendar in 2012, this track has quickly become a fan and driver's favourite alike. 20 corners, 12 to the left and 8 to the right will be contesting 11 laps here today. The question is, who will lead coming down that hill and out of turn 1? And will that driver take the checkered flag here today? We're minutes away from the start, so let's take a look at today's grid. It's Milton Verbe on pole position over Sergio Abaloa in P2. We're expecting a great battle between them going into Turn 1, and it's the two Abbey Grand Prix cars of Chloe Thomas and Sophie Tavia, respectively. On row, on row number 3, it's Mamanil Hadre for Delta Moore and our championship leader Alexia Pernay in one of her poorer qualifying performances. They've got Oscar Diaz for XCT and Luca Gasso for Jaguarati behind them on row number 4. Rounding out the top 10, Pascal Becker in 9th, unable to break his qualifying duck, and Scott Price alongside. Then it's Eduardo Melo in 11th, and Lucas Favrani starting in 12th place just behind him. Liam Turf has another good chance to score points from 13th. He's got Mick Wallam for company on row 7. Then it's rookie Joe Daly and Nathan Dino for Abbey, Abbey Academy on row 8. Can the rookies do anything from where they start here today? Ruiz lock out the ninth row, it's Eric Turner followed by Max Schmidt looking for a miracle to bag some more points this season, and it's William Evans in 19th, and the Italian Luigi Marchetta alongside. And finally, it's Bruno Cabral on the back row, and rounding them out, it's no surprise, Japanese rookie Riku Tanaka. Well, this looks to be a very exciting race, so let's go down to the grid for the start. Verve on pole, looking to add a third win to his collection this season as we go to five red lights for the United States Grand Prix. Round number 11 of the season is underway from the Circuit of the Americas. Here they go now towards turn one. Verve takes an excellent start going towards that first corner and he easily takes the lead over our below. He's pulled away just like that. What an incredible getaway we've just seen there from the young Brit. He pulls away. Chloe Thomas jumps him into second there over Sergio Below and El Hadro's up into fourth. Sevilla down to fifth place and Alexia Pernas had a terrible start. She's dropped the place and could drop another one here at the expense of Pas against Pascal Becker who's trying to go around the outside and there goes the German through the right hand now and taking seventh position but only briefly because Pernas still there on the inside. Here they come. Becker gets better traction out of the corner and takes P7 away on the start. Nothing to be taken away from Milton Verbe for this getaway throughout this first sector. He's pulled away to a decent lead over Chloe Thomas. Those two are pulled away from the rest of the pack. El Hadre up into third place now. Our below us trying to challenge to get that position back. He's lost two places in this opening sector alone. He's going to be wanting to get that place back as quick as he can. This long straight is going to be crucial to make an overtake here today. Down the straight they fly. Going down in towards the left-hander. Our below on pure pace. Make, managed to take the place away. But El Hadre is trying to come back at him though. Has to pull back into line. Has to defend from Sophie's via behind. And there's contact. And there goes Pekka who, who gets hit by Alexia Perne. And there goes... Oscar Diaz off the track. Not often we see mistakes from him, but he's made, he's made one there and he's dropped. Yeah, I don't think actually he's actually dropped any places. This, this has been a very poor getaway from Alexia Pernay, who of course only sits four points clear of Sophie Sevilla in the Drivers' Championship and could see herself losing that lead today if she doesn't get the hammer down and start making those places back. Her teammate though, Milton Verbe, continuing to show the way at the front as we come towards the end of what has been a very exciting first lap at the front. I'm looking forward to a race that was just as good with 10 more laps, just as good as that first one as Verve comes across the line, set to 1 minute 50.5. Chloe Thomas running second, she's got about 2 seconds on our blower and she's about 1.3 behind Milton Verve as they go through that first corner. Of course, Abbey Grand Prix looking to try and claim some points back on Team Apex. They won't do, they won't do a good job of that with Verve in the lead, so Chloe Thomas needs to take that top spot away. She's got to really, she's got to really find the extra pace from the BMW engine in the back of that machine and move forward. Of course, she's already gained some, or he lost some more time there. The gap's up to 1.5. Half second separates El Hadre from Sophie Zavia, who, of course, was, can be taking the driver's championship today with taking the championship lead, my apologies, with the, with a decent finish and the hope that Pernay drops a few places, which she has on the start. So it's crucial for Zavia in order to take that third 
to take the uh, the fourth place away in order for her to gain as many points as she can off of Pernay. Abaloa running third there. He's kind of just in the middle of these two these two fights for position. He's kind of just all by himself there, but he's just controlling his, where his position is. He, he he's currently 20 points off the leader Pernay, who goes to the inside. And there's contact. El Hadre gets hit by the back of gets hit. The back of the car hit by Sophie Sevilla, who's managed to find a way past. Bit, very, that was very aggressive. Elbows out driving from the Spaniard. But that's helped her up into fourth place, which is good for her because she needs those points on Pernay, who may have just found a way past Oscar Diaz. Yes, she has. And, and Diaz could now full threat to Luca Gatto and the Jaguar LT behind them as they come through the third sector. Verve still pulling away to a decent lead. He's probably got about two seconds now by my prediction coming off the last corner and towards the line to begin the third lap of this United States Grand Prix. Arbeloa still running third. Of course, he also wants to gain as many points as he can in order to try and close up to Sevilla and Pernay in the championship. A 144.8 from Verve. He's got just under two seconds on Chloe Thomas, who's got about one and a half seconds on Arbeloa. There's quite a, quite a gap back to Sophie Sevilla and Mamelo Hadre, of course, in battling for position. Pascal Becker's had a very good start here. He's jumped up and he's jumped up to sixth place after starting ninth. He's done very well. And just on cue, here comes the uh, positions gained and lost chart. So Verve hasn't gained or lost anything. He still remains where he was at the start of the race. Chloe Thomas has gained one place at the expense of Arbeloa. Sophie Sevilla and Mamelo Hadre back in their original starting positions. Pascal Becker's gained three, like I said, at the expense of Alexia Perne, Oscar Diaz, and Luca Gatto. And Eduardo Melo has jumped up into the points. He's gained one place today. He started 11th. He's now up in 10th. Verve still trying to stretch that lead, of course. This could be his second consecutive victory. We're still very early on in this race. Anything can still happen. It normally does in Formula A. But, of course, he can still take his third, his third victory of the season, his second consecutive win. And that will help him close up the 45-point gap between him and his teammate in the drivers, but in the drivers' championship. And of course, that will be a great improvement for the Apex team, who of course are already leading in the constructors' championship by a solid number of points. And like I say, Abbey Grand Prix need to get their act together because they had a really good start to the season. They were right up there with Apex, but they've fought, they've fallen away in recent races, haven't been able to compete with Pernay or Verve. They've won the last three races. Have Apex? They've absolutely dominated from the first 10 races. Of the of the season, Apex have won, I believe, half of them. Our below are closing in now on Chloe Thomas in the race for second place. Sophie's V has pulled away from El Hadre as they come off the last corner and begin move on to begin their fourth lap. Our below are really closing in now. He's definitely shut that gap down. The gap down down to a second. If he can try and get close enough to take to take second place, that'll do wonders for him in the championship as he looks to close in on both his rivals who are currently behind him. Through the S as they come. Verve still with a very good lead. Almost in the way in the distance. Two and a half seconds up the road from Chloe Thomas. Our below continues to close that gap. Nothing really gained through the first sector. If anything, he lost time there. But of course, those are minimal time increments that he's been losing. Pernay now is closed up to Pascal Becker. And the championship leader will be looking to get that position back as soon as she can. No doubt frustrated with her, herself for losing those places on the start and she's now trying to work her way back. She's already found her way past Oscar Diaz and now she looks to get past the German too. These two, one, one, one of them showing what a number two driver can do and the other one hasn't been doing as much this season of course. We've, if you've been with us the last couple of races you will have heard the stories about how Pascal Becker may potentially be losing his seat at Fireside. Of course we have to take into account that this is entirely new machinery from this season. None of them have ever, ever competed in this division before. This is, this is the inaugural campaign of Formula A but of course a team like Fireside who are expected to win the Constructors Championship currently sitting third way behind both Apex and Ami Grand Prix they were they look they're potentially looking at new drivers to replace Becker but if he can have a decent end to the season that might just convince the team that he is worth keeping around because Arbelo has sort of been performing as expected of himself somewhat he's been um He's been challenging both Sevilla and Pernay, but has fell off in recent races. That's why he finds himself 45, sorry, 20 points behind the standings. Verbe's 45 behind. The gap now down to within a second between Arvalo and Thomas here, who runs a little bit wide, makes a bit of a mistake there going through turn one, and it could be down to the Mexicans to try and pounce here. We're on lap five of this Grand Prix, and he's been closing in bit by bit. So I reckon by potentially by next time by the start of lap six, he may potentially either have the spot or will be very close to claiming it for us, for himself. Pernay still haranguing the back of Becker's car. Still desperately trying to find 
her way around that machine. Oscar Diaz still runs 8th, Luca Gatto still 9th, Eduardo Melo remains unchallenged since he took that position, he runs 10th. Chloe Thomas definitely being closed up by Sergio Baloa, falling away from Milton Verbe, who has no worries out back. He continues to build his lead. Whereas in the last race, Arbaloa was checked. Was it Arbaloa? I can't remember. But the driver finished in second, who, who was chasing him at the end of the last race. That they, they were chasing him throughout this, throughout the entire Grand Prix. This time, he's been allowed to build a comfortable lead, similar or unsimilar to his first victory this season in Canada, where he held off Arbaloa to take the victory. Well, he actually made a very late pass, and Arbaloa to take the win. But victory nonetheless, and it looks like he's about to add to that two-win tally with the victory here, providing he can hold on for the second half of the race, these next six laps. The yellow flags are out here. We're not quite sure what's happened. There's definitely been a contact. Oh, wow, and there's Lucas Feverani. His car is on fire, and there's definitely been an engine problem in the back of that Axle 76 machine. Didn't see that coming at all, and that and that, that's just going to be retirement. I don't see how we can keep going with the car in that condition. Looks to be hit for the for the axle set for the Brazilian, the axle seventy six machine, in no fit state to continue. Is Bruno Cabral trying to find his way past? The, the flames just spewing out the back of the car, smoke billowing out of the rear of the machine. He's going to have to pull over here, and there he goes pulling over. The race is over for Lucas Favarani. Very unfortunate there. Axel 76 with reliability was never really questioned during pre-season testing, which seems like a long time ago. The yellow flag's still out. I assume that's just for him. The marshal pushing his car over. Let me check the, check the track map here. Yep, still the same. Engine failure. Favarani out of the race. The Axel 76 with reliability issues were never really questioned during testing, which, like I say, feels like quite a while ago now. But it's never really come up in a situation, in a, in a race situation, where they've really had to pull the car over like that. Arbaloa is still closing on Chloe Thomas here in the race for second place. Sophie Zvira and Moemino Hadri now far separated. In that time, Alexia Pernay has found her way past Pascal Becker and has pulled away substantially from the German who runs now runs down in seventh place. And she's quickly closing in on El Hadre. Right now, this will be enough for Sophie Zvira to take the championship lead away from Alexia Pernay. Arbaloa, we, we need to close up those those last few points, I reckon this will put him around around maybe 15 points behind, and that could improve if he finds his way around Chloe Thomas. So we may still see a three-way title fight, or perhaps even a four-way title fight, if Verve keeps going like this, because of course, there's just another 10 points he's getting on Arbaloa alone, and then that's another 13 points he's getting on Sophie Zvia, and then I believe that's 17 points on his teammate Alexia Pernay which could become 15 if she manages to close up and pass El Hadre, who she sits two seconds behind. But yeah, Verbe in complete control of this race. He's building the lead to almost four seconds now. But Chloe Thomas has Arbaloa just under a second behind. Of course, Thomas's chances in the Drivers' Championship almost down and out now. Hasn't been able to live up to the heights of her teammate Sophie Sevilla. Because given the same machinery, the all-female lineup has still proved to be a very, a very good team this season. That's why they run second in the constructors. But they would love to take that gap, take that lead back. They can't with Verve running in first position. Down this straight, this is where the Ferrari engine really comes to the fore and continues to help Arbaloa close up to the South African in front. The gap still. Quite vast between El Hadre and Perno, but keeping an eye on that battle as well. 0.7 seconds the gap now between Thomas and Arbaloa as they come t into the last sector. This race has been very tight. Very, very close this one has been so far. And aside from in the battle for the lead, right now the battle for second is all we're getting. And it's still proven, it still could prove to be a very exciting one if Arbaloa can close those last few hundreds up. Sorry, close those last few tenths up to Chloe Thomas in these last four laps of the Grand Prix as Verve crosses the line. He's got he has he did have four seconds last time round, now he's got four point one. And the gap's still oh, just under a second between Thomas and Arbaloa, who's not really gained anything in that last sector. He needs to rely on the second sector to be his strongest. He needs to keep gaining time there and hope that potentially 
hopefully he can force Chloe Thomas into a mistake. Once again, take a look at the positions gained and lost chart. Still remains the same in the top three. Sevilla has hasn't lost any place as has El Hadro. Pernay's worked their way back up into where she originally started. Pascal Becker still has two places gained in this race at the expense of Diaz and Gatto. Eduardo Melo remains unchanged from where he was the last time you looked at the chart. He's running in 10th place. You look how close the Mexican is now. When we begin to wait and, and see till how long it, how long it will be until he gets a slipstream of some kind down this straight. I reckon by the next lap he could really have a good go at taking that position away from Chloe Thomas. Through the left hand they come. We're still keeping an eye on Perna and El Hadre. She's definitely closing that gap. El Hadre will, will not want her to get any closer. He's de but he's definitely not going to let her go without a fight. 1.2 seconds the gap. The last time we looked it was 2 seconds. This time it's 1.2. So she's definitely closing that gap. Pascal Becker still running second. Sorry, second? Seventh, my bad. Against Oscar Diaz. Who's got Luca Gatto half a second behind him? Who's been unable to challenge for that eighth position so far? Of course, he's been a, one of the bigger names mentioned for the fireside seat. There's many good drivers in the field here who could have a very good chance of taking that extra slot should they choose to let Becker go. But, like I said, if he can have a good end to the season, maybe take a victory, it seems unlikely, but it could potentially happen. Oh no! And once again. That is Liam Turton in the Thornton. His bad luck continues. And that's a loose wheel that has put him out of this United States Grand Prix. And that was very sudden. Never heard anything about that until just now when it just came up on the screen. But Turton out of the race. And that's another retirement to go on his to go on his name for this season. Of course, none of them have really been his fault. He hasn't actually he's yet to actually crash a car during a during a Grand Prix. They've all been mechanical failures, which you can come to expect from a team like Thornton, who were only who were only introduced to the Formula A last November. They only only established last November. Reliability still an issue for them. They're yet to crack. But within the final three laps of the race now, and it's still Verve in the lead, Thomas in second, and Arbeloa in third, unable to close that gap anymore. Meanwhile, Pernay is really, really closing in on El Hadre and could have a go down the main straight should she get close enough. What she doesn't want to go do is go for the move at the wrong time, and that because that could really cost her. She'd have to work her way back up again. The gap, as we look at it now, as El Hadre comes over the line, it's half of a second between the two of them. We'll keep an eye on that. Try not to miss an overtake this time. Here they come. Here comes Arbeloa and Thomas through the last corners. Chloe Thomas really pulls away on all the straights, and it's up to Arbeloa to gain all that time back with the Ferrari engine in the back of the machine as Verve crosses the line. He's got about 4.5 seconds now on Chloe Thomas, 4.4 to be exact. It's still just under a second between Thomas and Arbeloa. He was unable to gain any more time. This is a result that could really propel Verve back up into the championship fight. And he'll be hoping, for his sake, that El Hadre keeps Pernay behind. Although I doubt he can this late on in the race. Of course, he's in. The, he's got slower machinery compared to Apex as it is. Of course, they're both using Mercedes engines in the back of their cars. But Apex, as we say, is stronger. And that could cost El Hadre late on down this next straight. We still continue to wait for the Mexican to get close enough to make a move for that second spot. A battle which has appeared a bit anticlimactic. Oh no! And that's Eduardo Melo who's crashed from 10th place. I'm not. We're not quite sure what's happened there, but he's crashed the car. One of the wheels is gone, and he's out of the race. Where does and who goes up into the points? Scott Price goes up into the points at his expense, but he's lost his front wing. They must have made contact, so that puts Max Schmidt essentially up into a points paying position. Because I doubt. The price will be able to stay out much longer with a um, with a front wing missing there. Pernay's just found our way past El Hadre, but you can only hope that Eduardo Melo is okay. He's out of the race. A retirement for XCT here. That that leaves us just 19 runners left in this Grand Prix. And now here comes Verve around to begin his final lap of the Grand Prix. Bit of an, as I was saying, a bit of an anticlimactic battle for second. 
between Chloe Thomas and Arbaloa, who just hasn't managed to get close enough. Perne is reducing the amount of get points lost to her team to her teammate by two, so now she's 15 points. Provided the Verve holds on and takes what will be his third win of the campaign through the SSE comes for the last time today. He's driven an impeccable race, and I can't really think of anyone who deserves to win this thing more than he does. Chloe Thomas having also driven a good race, but of course the start means quite a lot in Formula A. What with these cars all very close in performance. So taking position at the start is crucial. Here comes Verve now, through the left hander onto the long straight. Like I say, he's driven a fantastic race all around. Really, really solid from him. And this will really help him close the gap in the championship as Scott Price goes into the pit lane, the one driver has to pit today. There he is making the uh, the pit stop change for a front wing. And as I say, that elevates Max Schmidt into the final points paying position. Pernay will have to settle for fifth on the road today, as will Arbolo have to settle for third, although he's gained great points on his championship rivals. Albeit only a few, it could really propel him back into that championship fight. And talking about being propelled into that fight, here he comes round the last couple of corners to take what will be his third victory of the 2021 Formula A season. Off the final corner he comes, we found out who is the best in Texas, and it is Milton Verve who wins the United States Grand Prix, round number 11 of the championship. Chloe Thomas comes through to take second over Sergio Arbaloa, just under a second. That was the closest Arbaloa got all day. Sevilla home in fourth, and the championship leader, Alexia Pernay, still holds on to that lead by just one point now. Sophie Sevilla, we haven't really focused much on the championship battle today between Sevilla and Pernay, but she's fought her way back to fifth, and gained a place in where she started. And that puts the gap down to just one point between them, with both Arbaloa and Verve having closed in. And in just five races, we'll know who will be our world champion. But this man, should he keep winning, has a very good chance of doing it. Milton Verve is your winner here today. Well, let's take a look then at the final classification after that excellent race. Milton Verve wins the Grand Prix, his third win of the season. His second in a row. Chloe Thomas finishes in second. Sergio Abelo running off the podium. Then it's Sophie Sevilla and Alexia Pernay, your top five. Pernay still just about holding on to lead the championship with that fifth place finish. And you've got a feel for the three retirees in this race. Eduardo Melo, Liam Turton and Lucas Favarani. Take a look at how, how that's changed the driver's standings. It remains unchanged position-wise, but Pernay taking only two, taking a two point lead away from this race at the top. Sergio Abelo is 15 points back and Verve is 30 points out. So he's definitely closed in today. So the championship closing up quite a bit with five rounds to go. Look at the constructors now. Apex still continue to hold a dominant lead in the standings by almost 100 points back to Fireside. Um, and then Abby Grand Prix at 27 back. So they've got serious work to do in these last five rounds. But we still have no idea who the world champions are going to be. But that has to be left for another race weekend. So we thank you for watching this, this afternoon's United States Grand Prix. We hope you'll join us for the next race of the, of the what's been a very exciting Formula A championship. Have a good afternoon.